Hi, I'm Peter Downhauer with Community Solutions Initiative and now I'm going to show you how to build an octopus hub which is essentially a power strip that connects to all our connectors uh, allows us to charge everything using a single uh, voltage source which could be a wind turbine, a light cycle or just a battery. So the first step is to cut six lengths of roughly 14 inch 14 by 2 wire there we go, we've got all six of them here. The next thing we want to do is to take our utility knife and split a, a, a roughly about two inches of the end of the wire uh, on both sides of the wire. So I'll just make sure I go right in the center. You don't need to put too much pressure, but make sure you get right in the center. If you have to, go over twice. And if you accidentally cut into the wire, that is, you cut through the insulation into the wire, and you need to snip off that wire and do it again. So I'll just go ahead and do all the rest of these. Here you can see the two types of amp mate and lock connectors which are the type of connectors that we've been using in this project. On the right side is the female connector, on the left side is the male connector. You can also notice that the pins inside the connector are different. The female connector on the right uses male pins, while the male connector on the left uses female pins. It's also important to keep track of which terminal is the negative terminal, which one is the positive terminal. We do that by looking at the, uh, the long side of the connector, and you can see a slight ridge along the top of it. That corresponds to the negative terminal. The other one corresponds to the positive terminal. You can see that it exists for both the male and female connectors. So for our octopus hub we have six wires and connected to those wires we're going to have five male connectors and one female connector. Uh, but first what we'll need to do is actually uh, strip the end of the wire so that we can attach the pins to the end of the wire and that's going to go into the connector itself. So using our wire strippers, we're going to want to strip off about one eighth of an inch on either wire. Now it's important that these lengths that you strip off are just about the same or else the pins won't evenly go into the connector and that will be a problem. If you have a little bit of extra here, you can use a, a, a single edge razor to uh, clean that up. Now what we're going to want to do is shave down the insulation a bit. Um, it has a tendency to snag on the, on the terminal of the connector as we put it in. So I just use a single edge razor and cut off a small bit of insulation uh, all the way around the wire, about a half inch down to the end. And sometimes in the center of the wire where you've uh, split it, there's a little ridge that forms and it's good to cut that off too because that has a particular uh, way of snagging against the terminal. Now before we crimp this on there I'll have you take note of the two flaps that are on the pin. The one outer flap which is thinner and the one inner flap which is uh, wider and this is going to go over the wire and the insulation respectively like so. And we may want to use a set of needle nose pliers to kind of wrap that around the insulation a little bit so it stays on there. It should kind of hang on there. At this point we're ready to crimp this on and I'll show you how this one crimps on quickly and then I'll show you a close up of how it gets crimped. So this is an Eclipse crimper and open barrel die set that we're using. Basically I want to put that pin into the crimper and then I'll let it get, uh, get in there a little bit and then it'll grab onto it. Put a lot of pressure on it until it crimps down and then I may need to go back and uh, Make sure that crimp is uh, 
attached around the insulation really well. Now let's show a close-up of that. So if you take a close look at the die, you can see that there's actually two sizes in the die uh, where we put this pin in. And there's a channel that's, that's smaller and there's one that's larger. The smaller channel is where the, the wider flaps are going to go, where the wire is. And the, the bigger channel is where the, the thinner, bigger flaps are going to go. I'll just kind of lay it in there so you can see where it goes. And what I want to do is I'll close the crimps down along it, put the pressure on it, and we have a completed crimp. As a convention, we need to specify which wire is positive and which wire is negative. Throughout all these projects, we're using the positive wire being the one with the writing on it, and the negative wire, the one with the ridge. If you push your, put your finger over it, you can feel a little ridge that goes along the outside of the negative wire. And when we put it into the connector, we need to maintain that, uh, those specifications. And with the connector, we have a ridge that goes along one side of it, and that corresponds to the negative wire. So as I put it into, I find the negative wire, I put it into the negative terminal, I want to put it in there, push it in there until it clicks. Sometimes you can hear it click, sometimes you can't. Then you know you've gotten it in there. I'll do the same with the positive wire. I've got them both in there, but as you can see, it's not quite centered. So what we need to do is use the pin extraction tool just to center those wires, and we want to just put a little bit of pressure on it in the right direction so that they get centered. If you don't center them, they're not going to connect to the, the other connectors. And finally, the last thing is, if you have trouble putting these pins into the terminal. Uh, you may want to make sure that you've gotten enough of the insulation cut down. You can also use some needle nose pliers and just give yourself a little more leverage there, like so. Now I'll do this for the rest of the connectors. Now that we've attached all the connectors and centered all the pins, the next step is to take one of the wires, take all of the wires, and on the other end we want to strip about an inch off, an inch of insulation off the end. Okay, now I'll continue to do that for the rest of the wires. Now with the ends of the wire stripped, we want to twist together three sets of two wires. So I'll make sure I get the negative and the negative wire. Twist that together. And I'll take the positive and the positive and twist that together. There we go. And I'll continue on with the other wires. negative and the negative, and the positive and the positive. Good, now that I've got the sets of two wires twisted together, now I need to twist all three sets together. And again, the negative go to the negative and the positive go to the positive. So I'll start two at a time. Take the positive and the positive right there. Twist those together. It helps to use a set of pliers to give yourself a little more strength on that. Okay, 
get started with my hands and use the pliers again. There we are. And then the final set. Once you put the third one on, it starts to get a little bulky, so you definitely have to use the pliers. all six wires twisted together we want to take our uh, large end caps and start twisting those on and they're, they're basically self tightening you want to jam the set of wires in there and start twisting and you'll feel a bit of tension build up and uh, it'll start uh, becoming harder, to, harder and harder to turn and then they're in there pretty well do the same for the other side Pull those out there and they're nice and nice and well. Let me just grab a zip tie. Which we'll put around the the wires just to hold them all in place. Use our pliers to tighten that up. And, and then clip off the excess. Now we finished our octopus hub.